We all know the main revolutions that have changed the face of the earth. Most recently, the Industrial Revolution. This saw an increase in the use of steam power and the development of mechanical tools. Before this was the Agricultural Revolution. This saw the development of agricultural tools and methods and led to greater productivity. And long before these was the Agronomic Revolution. started 542 million years ago at the base of the Cambrian. This consisted of an explosion of life. It is said to be the lineage for all known animals today. This diversification occurred at a range of about 30 million years. In this, mineralized skeletons blossomed. When the Earth formed over 4.6 billion years ago, it was a bottomless magma ocean. Through time it cooled and rocks started to form. The Precambrian period is the last of the Precambrian and it marks the formation of metazoans. These are organisms which require oxygen for their growth. This period spans between 635 and 542 million years ago. The stromal structure in the Ediacaran was much simpler than that of the Cambrian. It was dominated by sessile, epibenthic and soft-bodied organisms. Although it is now known that some organisms moved, such as Kimbrella. This is often associated with Wagener marks. So it is believed that Kimbrella may have moved around grazing on microbial mats. So it was probably one of the um, most active feeders of the Ediacaran. There is another organism that is believed to have been able to move. This is Dickinsonia. Although it is unlikely that it was a grazer or a deposit feeder, it probably just moved around quite intermittently. Um, due to this, it is believed that it was an osmotrophic organism and that it absorbed nutrients. Um, it didn't have a digestive tract or a mouth. One of the largest of the Ediacaran fossils is Charnia, and some of the specimens that have been found um, exceed one metre in size. Charnia is interpreted as an erect epibenthic organism, and it had, an it had a hole fast that probably anchored it into the substrate. Charnia had a flat, leafy body, and it has led to its interpretation as a sea pen, but given its branching, it probably can't be an Idarian sea pen, so it has been interpreted as a rangiomorph, and these are unique to the Ediacaran period. The sediment in the Ediacaran was much different to that of the Cambrian. There was much less oxygen in the atmosphere and in the oceans. The Proterozoic seafloor was covered by microbial mats, and these microbial mats had exopolysaccharides in them, which attached the biofilm to the substrate. And this um, stored nutrients and was acted as a barrier to unfavorable environmental conditions. There, were, there was very little bioturbation in the Ediacaran, barring some um, kind of burrowing on or just below the sediment surface. So this meant that there was no real mixing. Early lithification and precipitation of iron sulfides such as pyrite was generated by bacterial metabolism and organismal decay which generated hydrogen sulfides. This pyritization is a main form of preservation of the Ediacarans and can be seen quite well in the Gaozhishan Lagerstatin in South China. The microbial mats were the drivers behind preservation of the soft-bodied Ediacaran biota. It is thought that after rapid burial, these organisms were trapped on top of the microbial mats. Precipitation of iron sulphide resulted in positive or negative impressions of these organisms being preserved in the boundaries of these event beds. The microbial mats were widespread in the Precambrian, but with the evolution of burrowing and grazing in the Cambrian, their habitat was much more constricted to harsher areas to avoid predation. After the quiet world, the Cambrian explosion occurred. This resulted in a diversification of life forms, marking the takeover of mineralized skeletons and the start of predation. Treptichnus pedum, a trace fossil, is used to date the base of the Cambrian. When thinking about the Cambrian fauna, a good place to look is the Burgess Shale, which was first discovered in 1909 and is of mid-Cambrian age. Here, immaculate details of digestive tracts and internal organs of organisms have been preserved. One of the most famous trilobites of the Burgess shell is Olenoides serratus, which was a nectobenthic um, mobile creature, which is believed to have swam just above the seabed. Unlike the Precambrian, filter feeders were present during the Cambrian period. One such example is Hazalia palmata, which was a sessile epibenthic sponge. It fed through the 
process of filter feeding. Anomacaris canadensis was the largest predator of the Cambrian period and it reached up to a one meter in size. It is believed to have been nectonic or nectobenthic. It was carnivorous. Um, evidence for this is the presence of large eyes, spiny mouth apparatus and gutter glands. One of the major changes during the Cambrian was the evolution of burrowers, such as the priapulid worm Atoya. It lived in the sediment and used muscles and the proboscis of the body wall to move itself. It's believed that the proboscis protruded above the sediment surface in order for it to feed. It has been said that organisms alter their in physical environment to some extent. The Cambrian explosion saw the evolution of many new lifestyles of fauna. One of the most significant features of the Cambrian was the advent of vertical bioturbation. This allowed the Phanerozoic sediments to be mixed. This is referred to as a switch from mat grounds to mixed grounds, whereby the sediment went from having a sharp boundary with no water sediment interaction to a gradational boundary with fluid and gas exchange occurring. Hersey Zeek coined the term Verdun syndrome to describe the agronomic revolution. The Battle of Verdun took place in France in World War I, where armour and trenches were used extensively as a means of defence. In this way, he likened the evolution of burrowing and of hard exoskeletons to the trenches and armour used in World War I. With greater predation, organisms had to develop an informal life for protection, such as the trenches in World War I, or they had to develop a hard exoskeleton, such as the armour of a tank. No matter what causes explosion of life, it's clear that life changed dramatically on the seafloor. The event of bioturbation meant that the sediment was now mixing with the seawater, pushing the redox layer further down. This new mode of life, mainly increased burrowing, meant that the microbial mats no longer dominated the seafloor and signified the first appearance of a mixed layer in the sediment. High levels of predation and the ecological effects in the, at the change of the substrate ended the Garden of Ediacara and in turn the preservational modes of the Ediacara. And you know how you care And a voice in the garden In the Garden of Eden Make up! <laughs>